Welcome back to the Python tutorial series. I'm so glad you're here. This is the 18th video in this series, and today we will be learning about the difference between yield and return statements. We will first review return statements, and then learn about yield statements. Finally, we'll compare them with each other. The timestamps are in the description below, so let's get started. Let's first review a return statement. I'm going to create a function here called sum that takes in the parameters a and b and then return a plus b. On the next line, I'm going to print this won't print because if you remember, after the return statement, it exits the function. So line 3 will not print. Then I'm going to run this by printing the sum of 3 and 4. And when I run this, I will get 7. And there it works. I'm going to create another function called loop, which takes in the parameter number. Inside this, I will create a for loop for i in range num return i. Then I'm going to print test. And then I'm going to print the loop with the number 3. And when I run this, it's just going to output 0 not one or two because after the return statement, it exits the function, so it exits the full loop as well. So one and two will never print when we use return i. Also, the test never prints since the return statement is above the print statement. However, if we were to change this return statement to a yield and then print this out, it would return a generator because a yield statement returns a generator, not a value. And this is what the generator object looks like, this long hexadecimal number. If I wanted to get a value for the yield statement, I could do print list loop three. Now when I run this, I will get zero, one, and two as a list. And it's important to note that the yield statement remembers the last iteration, so the first time it will pick up zero, then exit, then it's gonna pick up one, then exit, and two and exit. So it remembers every single iteration. Also, it printed out test three times because unlike the return statement, the yield statement continues throughout the rest of the function. If I wanted to get a specific number using the yield statement, I could do count equals loop three, and then print the next count. So first it will be zero, then it will be one, and then it will be two. And when I run this, I will get zero, one, and two. And it also prints test because it's still going through this for loop. If I were to print next count again, there is not a next iteration. So this will cause a problem and I will get an error when I run this. And in fact, I do. I get an error that says stop iteration because we've gone past the end of the iteration. So that is an overview of how the yield statement works. Now that we know a little bit about return and yield, let's go over the benefits of using a yield statement. I created a function here with a parameter number and the user is going to input a list of numbers. If I were to use the return statement, I would need to append it inside the function. So I would need to create another list. I'll call this list squared and set it equal to a blank list. Then I'm going to create a for loop for i in range, the length of the numbers list. Now then I'm going to append two squared, which is currently empty, with each element of the list number to the power of two. Then when I'm finished with this for loop, I can then return the squared list. Now I can run and print this function by printing squares and then a list. For example, three, two, five, and eight. Now when I run this, I will get the output 9, 4, 25, and 64, which are the squares of those numbers, and it works. If I were to create a function called squares using yield, I wouldn't need this empty list at all, and I also wouldn't need this append either. 
I could just yield number index i to the power of 2. Then I can print the list of squared using yield and input the same list, 3, 2, 5, and 8. And when I run this, this will work. The difference between the two is that when I used a return statement, it took five lines of code and the function compared to three lines of code with yield. When I used return, I needed to take up more memory because it needed to store the entire list inside the function and outside the function versus when I use yield, it only stores the list outside the function. So yield is quicker to write and quicker to run, and it also takes up less space. So that's a benefit of using generators such as yield. So now let's recap the differences between return and yield. The yield statement returns a generator versus the return statement returns a value. After the yield statement, the code continues to run versus in the return statement, the code stops running. And each time you use yield, it picks up at the next iteration versus return restarts at the beginning every single time. And as we saw in the last segment, yield takes up less space and is quicker to run versus return statement takes up more space and is longer to run because you need to store more information inside a function. Both yield and return are used in functions and you can get data from both of them. So those are some of the similarities and differences between yield and return. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow along with this video series by subscribing and hitting the notification bell or by clicking on the next video so that you can expand your knowledge about Python. And as always, I can't wait to see you next time.